Welcome everyone at the Netherlands Startup Pavilion at Innovex 2020 Virtual. My name is John Jortsman, the Mayor of Eindhoven and Chairman of the Brainport Eindhoven Foundation. Let me first thank the Taiwan Trade Organization for their flexibility and their efforts in creating an Innovex online this year, also for the Netherlands. I hope I can meet very soon the new president of Tetra and I'm honored to open this year's online pavilion. Proud to be, again, the delegation leader of the Dutch startup mission from the Netherlands from the third time. For the very new few viewers who don't know Innovex, the Dutch government has marked Innovex Taiwan as the Asian strategic fair for the internationalization of our Dutch startups. The results have been excellent. The startup mission of 2019 resulted in new contracts over 16 million euros. In this year's pavilion, we present a selected group of five of the most innovative technology startups from the Netherlands. These are Morphotonics, Video Window, iPhotinks, Aquatic Drones, and Dimenko. I'm confident that these companies perfectly match with Taiwanese strong technology sector. Both the Taiwanese and the Dutch startup ecosystems are characterized by the innovation. Startups play a very significant role in creating a healthier, a cleaner, a safer, and of course, a more sustainable society. If even possible, let's strengthen the Dutch and the Taiwanese ties and thrive collaboration to achieve these important goals. Please feel invited to look around at our pavilion and meet our great Dutch startups. At last, I wish all attending companies a lot of fun, great meetings and success. And I'm looking forward and hope to visit you at Innovex 21 in Taiwan again with a large Dutch startup delegation.
i for things is a company founded in 2014 by two founders from the media and the telecommunications industry who have actually grown businesses before but always in an as-a-service business model. So that's also what we deploy at i for things but this time for the smart home. So we deliver Consolomio which is a smart home as-a-service platform for service providers globally. Through Consolomio actually we help service providers to create more stickiness with their end customers uh, so that the churn numbers will actually be reduced. It also offers them an opportunity to increase revenues and actually grow revenue per user or even actually attract new users because they offer a rich experience in the smart home to their customer base. Uh, at, at IBC we actually uh, launch our so-called smart home TV dashboard which is a combination of the world of TV and media. You can imagine a service provider like a telco or an ISP who offers a broadband TV connectivity uh, proposition but then combine that with a smart home offering on top where actually on one screen, the first screen in the home, we combine the worlds of media with let's say a favorite TV channel, favorite audio channel together with some smart home feeds like uh, camera feeds that can be off your doorbell, it could be the camera in the baby room so that you have actually an always on function in your living room where you have for the service provider the opportunity to put the branding, so their brand, in the center of the customer's house. But for the end customer, it gives the possibility to actually listen or hear or see its favorite content, as well as have a way to monitor the performance or the things happening in the home. When you look at the uh, smart home market, there's of course, it's not a new market. Smart homes exist already for quite some time. Uh, in that respect, we are not inventing the smart home here. What we try to do is to integrate the huge amount of brands that are already available and that even will become available. So a challenge for many end customers is that they have a doorbell of this device, some smart lamps of another device and they actually get a plethora of apps in their telephone to sort of operate each and every uh, device individually. The complexity of making even scenarios from if the doorbell rings I also want my lights to flash that is already for many consumers way too difficult. So in order to successfully deploy a smart home offering on the market you need to solve that challenge for the customer. Make it easy to set up and make it easy to use. And that's one of the challenges that we face on that we solve on behalf of our customers. There's many types of deployment of a smart home and the use cases that you can actually pinpoint. Often a use case comes with a specific set of devices. Um, to give a few examples of use cases, I think if you look at the, let's say, most active reason why consumers would at the moment invest in a smart home, often you hear security. That's obviously one of the most uh, precious things to protect is your home and your dearest family. So for that reason, you see many people invest in a smart home with security type of use case. On top of that, uh, there are additional use cases that we uh, envisage, like energy. How can I, let's say, energy efficiently operate my, uh, my home? We also see comfort. I just want to have an ease of, ease of setup, that the lights go on automatically when I come at home or when the sun sets, that the lights go on. Uh, some sort of comfort things. And more and more, we are also, also approached by customers who are interested in a care use case. I mean, we work for service providers in the broadest sense of the world. We are, of course, here on IBC which is a fair for broadcasters and, and, um, and, and more people out of the telco domain. But obviously the care use case can be also relevant for uh, insurance companies. And of the energy use case can again be very uh, relevant for an energy company or a utility. And those are all, let's say, types of service providers to which we talk and that are interested in our solution to offer it to their customers as a service. Offering a fully managed service where you actually have a subscription model where an end customer would pay per month a certain fee and we would also be paid by our service provider customers a certain monthly fee. Of course if you offer an as a service platform you also need to provide a service. So what is the kind of service we provide is that we actually keep this ever expanding ecosystem of devices of all different brands 
even of our own brands, that we keep that uh, working, so that there's full device lifecycle management. So should there be, for instance, be a firmware upgrade on a certain device, or should the API change, then the service provider customer, but particularly also not their end customers, they should not need to worry about that. We solve that on their behalf, fully under the hood. So that's where we add value and really provide an as-a-service proposition to the customer. Lifecycle management, that's one aspect. The second aspect of an as-a-service proposition is that also should something require attention of the end customer, that preferably the end customer is proactively informed. So let's take a use case where, for instance, a smoke detector uh, runs low on battery. It could happen that then if you leave the battery drain, uh, at a certain point, in, a point of time you wake up in the middle of the night because the alarm goes off, not because there's smoke, because the battery is empty. So why not, if we can detect that state of the battery remotely through our operator console, why not proactively inform your customer, look, we see that the smoke detector on the second floor is uh, on 10% battery capacity. We strongly advise you to, within two weeks, replace the battery. Actually, we can even detect if the customer has actually done that. So if after two weeks the battery has not been replaced, we could send a kind reminder. We could even offer, we see it's device XYZ, it's that battery type, would you like us to send you a new battery? So the whole as-a-service concept is really full, filled in in multiple different ways. Again, device lifecycle management, and secondly, proactive support. And also, should that happen, we have the possibility, of course, to reactively, through a customer care help desk, support the end consumer.